What's up everyone, Skyler from Chernobyl Studios. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a drum map in Cubase, and also a couple of tips and tricks that you can use when you are writing MIDI in Cubase. Obviously, the first thing you need to do is insert your drum library of choice. I'm just gonna use Easy, Easy Drummer here for demonstration purposes, because it's the easiest. So in Cubase, once you've done this, you've inserted the, the drum library that you wanna use, you need to click either on the track itself. So for example, if you are inserting the drums as a track, it'll just be inserted as a track. If you are inserting it as a rack, you are going to be creating a MIDI track that is connected to the drums. In any case, you need to click either on that MIDI track or the drum track itself because you want the inspector pane to, to be visible here. You're looking for this little section right here where this denotes the type of drum map that you're using. In this case, we don't have a drum map. We haven't created it yet, so it's telling us you don't have a drum map. Uh, if you don't see the inspector pane, you want to direct your eye to the right side of Cubase. There are zones. Make sure this is shown, all right? Click on the bit where it says no drum map. You're gonna get a pop-up that says no drum map, GM map, drum map setup. We want to go to drum map setup. Once we do that, we are going to see the GM map setup here, which means nothing to us. Okay, so I'll just call this easy drummer three default. Okay. So what this means is that if I have easy drummer three and I use it in this configuration, like I just load it and I, here we go. I don't touch it. This is going to be the drum uh, map I'm going to use it for. If in the future I'm using this and I go, you know what? I don't need this time. I never use it. And I take it out of the kit. You either have two choices. You need to remember that you don't have this Tom. So don't bother programming it when you're using this drum map. Or you can edit the drum map and save it as an alternative with the Tom deleted off of it. Okay. So this is not a one size fits all drum map. The drum map is gonna be created for the exact instrument configuration that you're currently using. So please keep that in mind, okay? So let's bring this back. So here we go. This is the configuration we wanna use. We wanna drum map every little bit of this kit, okay? So how do we do that, all right? Well, there's the hard way, which is you just kinda of go like this. Oh, the hard way is you need to connect, make sure your drum is connected, right? Then you just kind of, okay, you click around. Okay, this apparently is Crash 2. This is the ride. And you just start naming things, right? The issue with this is that there are multiple articulations for each instrument, so you don't know which articulation you're using unless you have very good ears. But even then, you can get fooled, and it'll take a long time. And there are faster ways to do it, so why would you do that? Okay, I'll show it to you right now. The way that I would prefer to do it, and I would suggest it to you, is this. Just click one of the instruments in Easy Drummer, right click, come down here to Edit Mapping in eDrums MIDI In. You're gonna get a window that pops up on top. This is a window on top in Easy Drummer. See the X here, you can close it up here. Okay, so it's, a, it's an extra window. And in this particular situation, every instrument I click, I can see exactly where the articulations are and where they are uh, in, the, in the MIDI mapping. So there's no guess one, okay? So I can go right along here, I can just do that. I tend to work with the shells first, so I'll go kick, snare, toms, hi-hat, and whatever. But the thing that you also need to note here is for some reason, I don't know why this is, uh, in Easy Drummer it's gonna say 36. This is what's gonna happen. You're gonna come over here, you're gonna go to sound 36, and you're probably gonna be like, oh cool, here it is. And you're gonna do this, right? And then you're gonna click. And you're gonna be like, awesome, that was easy. Let's move to the snare. Okay, and snare, ah, snare center, 38, awesome. What the, f wait a minute, what? Yeah, exactly. I don't know why this happens in Cubase. Maybe it's a bug in Cubase, but for some reason, the number that it shows in Easy Drummer, it's one less than what it's generally gonna show up in as the drum map. The kick seems to always work. It's just something I've gotten used to working in Cubase. I just wanted to tell you that that's gonna happen and you're gonna get confused. 
I guess it's a feature. I have no idea. All right. Uh, double check it, right? So if I click on kick here, I'll be like, okay, it's 36. Okay, it's 36. What's this one? 37. Okay, so these are both kicks. Does it matter? Uh, apparently it doesn't matter because there's only one note number for the articulation. Okay, fine. Then I'll just leave this as kick, whatever, who cares, right? And then you move on to the snare, all right? Now here are all the articulations for the snare. You don't, unless you're going to play E drums, these zone triggers don't matter to you. So I wouldn't even bother uh, putting them in the drum map. All that matter to you are the articulations that you can program. So don't worry about zone triggers or or various other triggers that's for playing on e-drums. So unless you're playing e-drums, these don't matter to you, right? And then just go right down the line. So this says uh, center. Apparently it's note number 38. Let's see what that does. Nope, note number 38 in the drum map is triggering sound 37 in Easy Drummer. Well, it doesn't matter actually. We can just kind of name it like this, snare, side stick, okay? When I have multiple articulations of the same instrument, I generally will do this. I'll have a, um, I don't know, like I'll abbreviate the main instrument and then I'll put the articulation after it. So I know this is the side stick. Let's just go on down the line. Okay, here we are. This is the regular snare, center. Keep on going. Center. We already have center articulated, so we don't need another one. So I'll actually delete this. And then I'll mute it right away, just so it can't accidentally trigger again. Okay, let's actually do the same thing with the kick here, because we don't need two kicks, okay? So let's go to E. This is rim shot. So we go snare, rim shot, all right? Okay, apparently, you know, we're done with the, with the snares, which is not true. We're missing edge, which is 33. So we actually need to go up here. That's a crash. There it is. So it's it's actually sound 34 in our drum map. So we go here, we go snare, edge. Okay. 35 is kick. We already have a kick, so we can delete that. Okay. And this is this is how you do the map. This is how you do the mapping. All right. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll complete the drum map right now. Uh, it, it'll take me a couple minutes, but you will see the new drum map right about... Now, as I said, instant. So we finished with the drum map here. Now we're not done. Okay. So in Cubase, there's <laughs> there's basically two ways that you can do this. Um, you can order the instruments top to bottom, or from bottom to top. Now I would recommend ordering them from top to bottom. What I mean is we take the kick and we drag it all the way up to the top, and then we go to the snare, and then I would do the shells hi-hat ride symbols and you know i would try to put the things that i'll use the most up to the top here all right and then in cubase we're going to flip it i'll show you what i mean so all i'm going to do now is i'm just going to go and find all of my like instruments which is why i named them the way i did this way and then uh we want to order them all okay so you know they're going to be all over the place because that's how the the drum map works sometimes, so I get all the snares. So I'll have the kick, uh, probably the center would be the most calming, and then maybe the edge, and then maybe a rim shot, a side stick, and then rim only, okay? So just like this, and then you can go and test them. So kick, snare, center, edge, rim shot, side stick, rim only, okay? It's time consuming, but it's good to go ahead and check this once again before you save it. Uh, so you don't ever have to do this ever again. You know what I mean? So after the snare, I think I would go with rack tom one, which should be called rack one, which it is. So rack one center. And we just need to keep going. Uh, it's really annoying here. So rack, 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 rack. All right. So now we've got our entire drum map here. Uh, in the way that we want it, in the order that we want it. You're not done. Make sure you save this, okay? Because it's not actually saved yet. So you need to go up here and you actually need to click on save. All right, don't close this. So we'll just call this Easy Drummer 3 default. And then I have a huge folder of a bunch of um, drum apps, as you can see. Now it's saved, okay? Now you're safe to close this. 
you can close this. But if you if you're like yay and you go to open this, you're gonna realize there's no drum map loaded yet because we have to load the drum map. So we come back over here to the inspector, click the menu again, and then click Easy Drummer 3 Default. And then voila, you will see that we have our drum map. Now you can already see that the drum map is starting from the bottom up. Um, I think by default, we have, where is it? Nope. I don't even remember how to do this anymore. Uh, oh yeah, it's right here. So by default, the uh, um, it's going to be like this. Kick will be on top, snare followed by everything. It'll follow the order that you made it in the drum map. To me, that makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, I like that, and, and plus I've been writing MIDI drums for 20 years. I'm used to the kick being on the bottom. This is weird to me. So I will always come up here to the select pitch visibility options here, and I will reverse the drum list sounds. So it reverses it, and then this makes way more sense to me. Kick, snare, all the way up on the top. Now, you might be going, well, Scott, I have a really small monitor, and obviously, you know, there's a lot of articulations here, so how do I make it so I can see everything, right? Well, if you're in Metal Drum Programming Mastery, I show you, you know, the, the, the five-step process of actually writing drums, which means that you don't need to see all this at, at right away at first. So... The biggest tip that I can give you about writing drums here is that you can hide and show certain articulations. So for example, if I'm writing a song, like all I want to do is I want to do a mock-up of the kick and the snare. I see in Cubase, I'm writing outside of the event right now. So I'm writing over here. Cubase, it, does, it doesn't care. It doesn't read this. It's not playing this back because it's not part of the event that it sees, which is right here. If I do something here, it'll play it back. But what I'm doing is I'm writing outside of the event so that I can come up here to this button that says pitch visibility on off. I click this, bam. Now I see only the kick and the snare, which means that I could bring this all the way down like this and I can make, for example, my guitar is really big, all right, or even better, let's say, for example, I've got, you know, guitars, we're just jamming away here. I can use the inline editor, and I've got my kick snare right here, and it's good to go. Now, the issue with this a little bit is we don't have the drum map here. It's the inline MIDI editor, so it has the name of the articulation. It is what it is. I mean, you can, it's, nothing's perfect in this world, right? But... It's just another thing you can do for quick work. But otherwise, you've got the snare and the kick down here totally visible. You can see everything. Um, and as the song, as you keep writing drum parts, uh, the articulation list will grow. So if you go, okay, I like my drums. I like my, my snare and my kick the way they are. Let's just put it in here so we got something. You can go, okay, I want to see more articulation. So you click the button again. And you go, okay, I want to start adding hi-hats. So... Um, let me add, oh, I don't know. Let's just go with, what's this one sound like? Cool. Let's do open hi-hat edge two, right? So I'm writing outside of the event again. I come up here to the pitch visibility. I turn that on and off. And now I have the hi-hat here and I can just, I can change. And just, right? So that's, the, that's probably the biggest major tip that I can give you about uh, working with or writing drums in Cubase is hiding the, the the articulations uh that you do and don't need to see especially when you've completely written a song totally let's say you the song's done um let's just add some more stuff here like even for me this is annoying i have a pretty big monitor with pretty big resolution um there's not really a better way <laughs> so this is the way it is so let's go um i'll do a crash one and a crash three Save, uh, do this. So crash one, crash three. Great. Okay, we're done. Uh, there's no reason for you to have that entire articulation list open if the song is written. 
and you have everything that you're going to use, you're not going to do anything else, just go ahead and click the Pitch Visibility button here, and it'll narrow everything down so that you can move it down like this and keep more screen real estate, you know, uh, of what you uh, actually want to see, okay? Um, so that's how to create a drum map, how to save it, how to order it, and then how to work with it in Cubase. Um, hope you found the video helpful. If you have any more questions about using Cubase, feel free to ask me and I can probably do a video for you. All right. So thanks a lot, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. Have a good one.